Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you design for a redstone shop. Now this isn't a shop that sells redstone. This is a shop that uses redstone to make it, well, easier to sell stuff. Basically, it's got a user interface like this. You put the items you want to select in and then the items are delivered to. So there's no big chest hall with loads of different chests all labelled with different things you want to buy. Just one single chest and then one single output system and one chest for the diamonds and it's as simple as that so this is all you'll see in this design and you can maybe like extend it back around here and this would be your wall so this is all you'd actually see which makes it pretty good for if you want to do only a small shop design if you're not good at building or something but anyway let's get into how it actually works to start with, let's go through what the input system is. So here we have a chest, and it's just an ordinary chest, there are no hoppers underneath or anything. And that's all it is really, it just contains all the items that you sell. But the organisation of items is pretty important, because each single item signifies the amount it is. So one diamond equals 16, so one item here would equal 16. Whereas this one's one diamond for one sack, so one item of this will give you one sack, and so on, depending on the amount specified. So that means that when you throw it out, because what you're meant to do to choose the item you want to buy is you throw it out, and under these carpets are actually hoppers, so you throw it out and they get picked up by here before you can actually get it, and then funnel down to this bit. Here it uses the soul sand trick, which basically means that when a minecart is on soul sand and there's rail underneath, as soul sand isn't actually a full block, then it sinks down onto the rail underneath and it kind of teleports instantly. And we can use this to our advantage to make it so it only picks up one item for this chest, because this can only accept one item at a time. So we've got a special input system so you can throw as many items as you like but only one will come at a time, which is pretty good because then you don't have to wait every time. But anyway, so the minecart with the one item will go here and come to Il Mango's um, minecart unloader which will basically, well it clips into the lava cauldron here and onto this rail because mud, kind of like soul sand, is not a full block so it goes to this rail but it clips into lava cauldron, breaks, the items go here. Then the items will fly up here, go across here and there's a row of item filters here. So these are just your ordinary item filters set up like this and each one is for one of the items that you're selling in this chest. And basically the item goes in here and then whenever an item comes through that is picked up and put into this and this is basically a design for a tileable hopper counter like a tileable etho hopper counter so it goes into this and it counts out and when it starts it starts shooting out items and when it's done then it stops and depending on what we set this to then that's how many items will be shot out of here so basically what this does is it picks up when you choose an item and then it shoots out the right amount of items. Now, these hopper item builders are actually pretty easy to set up. So all of these repeaters are set to three ticks, the ones that are in use. And then in the hopper, depending on how many items you want to come out, you put in divided by four, well the number of items you want to come out, divided by four. So if that's 64, that'll be 16. And then you'll divide, then you'll take away one from that. So there'll be, there should be one. So if you wanted 64 items to come out, then you should put in 15. So we can show that by coming to one that hasn't been assigned. Let's just take some items here. And here, since we want 64, we'll put 15 items in. Just like that. Then what we can do is we can come out to... I think it'll be this one probably. No, it'll be this one. And then here we can load up some items into this dropper and also into this dropper. And then finally, all we need to do to test if this is working 
just come over here, down here, and then break that torch and place it back. And as you can see, we're getting a load of items come out here, and they're going up here, and they'll arrive in this chest. Let's just put them all like that. And we're still getting a few items coming through. And as you can see, we've also got this system where it brings it up very quickly. It's kind of like an instant dropper line. So this is very useful to use because it brings them up very, very quickly. And as you can see, we got 62. Oh, that's probably because I didn't actually set it to three ticks. Because this needs to be set to three ticks for it to work. But basically, we've got that so you can easily specify how many items you want to come out. And if you don't, and if you want to do single item, then you just set it to one and you can just remove one of these dispensers. That's all. And yeah, so that's that. Now let's move on to an individual slice. And here it is, just one single slice all on its own. And this is what it looks like. So, though it is quite big, it's actually not that complicated. So down here we've got the item filter, designed by Tango Tech quite a while ago now, but it's become the standard item filter now. Then we've got this observer, this reads a signal here, because when we put one more item in here, then this redstone dust will turn on, meaning that this observer will pick up and shoot this observer up here, all the way up here. So when this observer comes up here, it'll see this change and shoot our redstone signal into this repeater. Then this repeater powers this block, turning this redstone torch off, and then turning this one off. And then that also turns this one off, which turns this one. Basically it turns all of things off. Then that activate, that means that as this comparator isn't reading the output, this piston isn't actually being powered anymore. So, then this one is, so it extends, and that activates the item clock here. And then that means that this will activate, picking up the signal from this bit here. Or no, picking up this signal from this observer. Because when this redstone block moves, this observer sees it and shoots its piston out. Meaning this activates when the redstone clock activates. And then it starts shooting out items. However, when the redstone clock's done and goes back, this observer senses that this piston shoots out and pulls the observer back, meaning that items stop coming out. So that is uh, not the easiest to follow, but that's basically how it works. All you need to know is that when an item comes through here, it shoots out the right amount of items up here. Now, I'm not going to show the entire system in today's video, but I will show you how to make a singular slice, because basically all you have to do is tile this as many times as you need to. If you do want to see the system and stuff like that, you can
that or when the piston arm extends it out. Come down below the redstone block here and place a temporary block there and then one block on top of it. Then you can remove the temporary block. On top of this, facing away from the redstone block, place a comparator just like that. Then run this comparator into the done so this is completely tileable so you can tile this as many times as you want it's the same size every time you will have to slightly modify the water streams here every now and again but other than that it's the same thing so you just need to get in the input system and as I said I won't be doing a tutorial for that this episode instead you can get the world download from down below thanks for watching subscribe and goodbye